We can get shut out. We can get left out, pushed out, driven out. Because we're dealing in a fallen world. So we need to examine what it is we're waiting on. I want everybody to take one, like 20 seconds, that's all it would take, and think about what something you're waiting on. Money doesn't count. We're all waiting on money. Unless you're super rich. Anybody super, super rich in here? If you are, you can solve my problem. What are we waiting on? Because let me tell you why money doesn't count. Because the Lord says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all these, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So that's why, don't look at the, don't look at the money thing. Look at what are you waiting on. So you could be waiting for clients. Now, true clients bring finances, but it's not the finances you're waiting for, it's the vehicle God brings the finances to you in. So, what are you waiting for? You waiting to be approved by man? Young man? You waiting to be approved by man? Your eyes are closed open and up. Oh, sorry. I was... I know, I know. Yes. Are you are you waiting for man to approve you? Or wait, are you waiting for them to give you an okay that you can do what God called you to do? And they decide when you're ready and when you can do it? Or do you stand up in strength and power and the anointing and the authority and say, this is what I'm called to do. I'm sharing it with you. This is my ministry. This is what I'm called to do. I want to talk to you about it. But... You're not giving them permission to shut you down. You're sharing your vision with them. When I went, when I just, when I, when the Lord wanted me to go into having meetings, uh, back in, uh, well, we're getting close to 14 years, 15 years ago. Okay, I didn't go ask for permission. I already had a ministry. I was already ministering to people. I was already going. I mean, everywhere I went, I was prophesying and ministering house meetings and with other ministers and stuff in my gift. I was using it far, way back more than I was putting my own meetings together, okay? So when I decided to do it and go over to, at, the, at that point, was the Radisson Hotel and rent a room and put it together, I didn't ask permission because I knew not to ask. The Lord told me, do not ask permission because I wouldn't have gotten it. So I didn't say anything, and I didn't ask permission, and I did it. And, and uh, I was with a friend, and we were at, on the border after we did all the business into it. We went on the border to have lunch. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, here comes my pastor, and he comes over to the table, and he says, Hi, how you doing? And we said hi, and told him how we were doing. And, and then uh, he gave us a hug, and then he left, and then the waitress said he paid for our lunch. That was my sign blessing. But I still didn't say anything yet. Because of the situation that I knew that I would be dealing with in my, as a woman, as a woman minister, and I didn't want to interfere with women's ministry at church. So there were, there were things I didn't want to take away from. So I wanted to go out and get the room at the Radisson and be independent of that so that I didn't, uh, you know, usurp anything. Because I didn't want to usurp anything. So I was ministering for a few months, and, and so one day my pastor asked me, uh, Shirley, what, what's these meetings you're having? And I said, oh, I said, um, once a, one Monday night a month at the Radisson. He goes, once a month? And I said, yeah, just one Monday night a month at the Radisson. He goes, and what are you doing? I said, speaking and prophesying a little and for some praise and worship. He goes, one night a month? And I said, yeah. He said, oh, the rumors are going on that around that you started a church. <laughs> Aren't people nice? And I laugh. 
And I said, well, first of all, you and I know that could never happen because I'm not called to pastor a church. And I never would do that to you. And that's not my heart. And I know exactly what I can't do. And he laughed and he says, you keep doing that on Monday night, one Monday night a month. And he blessed me and he said, come see me. And I went to see him and uh, this is what he said. If you have anything you need, come and talk to me about it. He says, and I'll share with you my wisdom, but all the final decisions are in your hands. It's your ministry. So it was godly and awesome and wonderful and honored. And eventually, the Lord woke him up in England and told him, get my daughter off the streets. Was, I was at the Radisson Hotel. Get my daughter off the streets and bring her and give her a room at the church to minister in. And in the middle of the night, he called the assistant pastor and said, you've got to get a hold of Shirley Strand because this is what the Lord said, woke me up, won't let me sleep, and told me you get my daughter off the streets. Only reason he didn't before that was because I said I don't want to interfere with the women's ministry. So I want to be independent over here. Well, I was doing it long enough so that wouldn't happen and people, and he had blessed it and they put it in the bulletin and so I was no longer a threat, do you understand? So he, so I went and had a meeting with the assistant pastor and I said, uh, yes, I would like to do that and I'll bring the meeting over here as long as you know that this is Wind of the Spirit ministry and it's independent, it, 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 I'm covered by Dutch but it's independent from the church. And he said, "We, well, yeah, exactly. And it was a blessing. I was there for, what, 10 years? More than that. And uh, never missed a meeting. And it was a blessing. But I had to stand up to what I knew, who I knew I was, and step out to do what I needed to do. But what I didn't do was look to the leaders to endorse me, Give me money, baby me. You can't do that. You have to do it on. If God called you, he'll pay for it. He'll set it up. He'll do it. So at that point, what was it that I was waiting on? I can tell you exactly what I was waiting on. It's pitiful what I'm going to tell you. All those years. I waited on that I could be accepted by the whole body of Christ. It never happened, it never will. I didn't know that. I didn't know that was part of ministry. That's okay. Not everybody's gonna love you, not everybody's gonna accept you. And I wanted to be respected and honored. And since then, I have found out, it was from, from what happened to me when I was a child and I was in an orphanage, abandoned and left. Always looking for somebody to love me and take care of me. In my case, just so you could know my story, I was there just a couple of years and my parents came back and got us. My mother had gotten sick. My father had run off in the middle of the night. Three of us were taken to relatives and three of us at that time, there were six of us at that time, were taken to an orphanage, Sacred Heart Orphanage in Pueblo, Colorado was devastating. I was 10 years old. Almost 11 to almost 13, the puberty years, you can imagine. And so that colored my life. And my pastor, precious, 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 he said, you can't go out there and minister, Shirley, out in the, out in the marketplace until you're healed of this. You'll get killed out there. And he was right. But I had my meetings in town. Then one day I was licensed and ordained and he said, you're ready because now you're not looking for everybody to love you and, you know, and, and I, I wanted them to. I wanted to fit in. I wanted to belong. I wanted to be, I guess, popular and pleasing. And God stripped that. And it's been a long, hard stripping. To the point where, as you saw tonight, even, the, even this being 
the, the final meeting here tonight as we go into the next thing that God has. And I'll still have the meetings in Colorado Springs. But then I'm going to go into home meetings is what I'm going to do in the Castle Rock area in Denver and whoever would like to have them. I'm going to branch out that way for a little season. So it's been, even with the total agreement and unity and everything that we have here tonight, I could have threw a little tantrum and refused to prophesy over the next generation. How ridiculous. Some people do that, don't they? And I get these words and I start crying. The Lord shows me their little hearts. And it's like, wow, look what God's going to do. And then you just prophesy over the next thing and you go, next? Some of you guys in ministry understand what I'm saying. You have to prefer each other in love and never leave anybody out and minister to your last breath. I have a friend that said on her, she was on my deathbed, I'll be prophesying to the nurses. She knows that. Because she's not going to lay down who she is. Rather, if she doesn't have a huge congregation or she doesn't have a meeting, she's not going to stop giving. She's not going to stop ministering. She's not going to stop helping. She is not going to leave anybody out. Those three precious kids, they're just finishing up to them. Well, all three of them finishing up their, their education thus far. And God speaks. And you know when he spoke, do you know what that told me? You know what that told me, Dave? What? And you know what that told me, Diane? That told me that the next phase for us is coming and you speak into their lives and then if he has something he's taking them into and since every, the generations, every living thing that's alive at the same time know that. This generation, everything that's living at the same time, whether it's in the womb to the person laying there ready to go to be with the Lord. That's that generation. And he's got something for every one of us. And if we throw a fit and pitch a fit and get disappointed, we won't get there. We'll spin our wheels. I consider the time that God gave this ministry and with Dave and Diane and Mike and Dina, all of us in early... The time that was spent here was precious. And it was of the Lord. And God had people he sowed into. And we ministered and preached. And we had good praise and worship. Am I telling the truth? And we had decent preaching. And we had prophecy as if the room was full. And God met us. And I believe with my whole heart because somebody gave me a word. And here was the word. Because you minister just like you would if a, if, if a room was full and how you prophesy and how you minister, God is honoring it. It's been a test of faith that you would do what God called you to do no matter who was there and who not was there. And I will confess to you, at times my heart would drop. And I'd feel disappointed. Because I'm, what, only human, right? But then the strike of a song. Mike would start a song. And I would just come alive. And then a prophetic word would come. And then a message. And then I'd prophesy for each one that was here. And it would be electrifying and alive to me. Because it was what God wanted for this season. Nothing is wasted. If I leave here tonight, and I would think in my heart that one minute of the time here in Marksburg did not count for the kingdom, I'm in error. Amen. It's his kingdom. It's his call, isn't it? And he calls the shots, and we do it. While Dave and Diane were gone, they don't know this, uh, some of the people that come to these meetings wanted to still have a meeting. I said, well, 
would you open up your house so we could go ahead and have the meeting? I'm just thinking there's going to be about five or six of us, right? You know? Lourdes, am I right? I'm just, you know, like, whoever comes, who comes, you know? And I said, sure, I'll, I'll come and do a house meeting. And I said, um, Dave and Diane were gone by that time. And I said, oh, I said, Dave, and I even said that. I said, Dave and Diane would love that. You guys will still get ministered to, and, you know, and go ahead, you know. And so Debbie Nichols opened up her house, Debbie and Ma Mark and Debbie Nichols. And uh, she says, I sure hope somebody comes. She said, and I said, me too. <laughs> and so she invited us to come to dinner early at 5 o'clock before we had the meeting. And we had a wonderful meal, a wonderful time together. And 7 o'clock came. And I kid you not, the doorbell started ringing and they start flooding in the house. And she sent an email out. And I don't think we even sent an email, did we, Arma? To, for it? No, we didn't even send an email. I just thought she could invite who she knew, you know. And uh, for some reason, some of the people that attend this, she had their emails. And because uh, she loves to minister to people and stuff. And the little, the little Spanish gal with her kids came. Yeah. And then all those, that group that came that one night. And then they invited friends. And their friends invited friends. We had a house full. And, but God had told me, God had been speaking to me, I want you to do some home meetings. And if you know me about home meetings, I'm like, oh, because it's kind of hard, you know? And I said, okay, Lord. And so when Debbie, you know, said she'd open up her home and, our, and Lourdes has said she'll, Bob and Lourdes said they'll have a meeting. And then Connie said she'll have a meeting. And this one and this one. And I'm going, whoa. God's up to something. And what if the Lord has a meeting here and a meeting here and a meeting here. And David, it's like a connecting thing. And that's what he wants to do for a season up in this area. And it's, in, it's Castle Rock, Castle Pine, Denver, Aurora, all, you know. Where do you live? Highlands Ranch, then we'll go with it. People will come to a home that will never go to church until God lives in their lives. So that might be what God's up to. And it was phenomenal, you guys. The presence of God, it was just phenomenal. And it reminded me of the meeting when you invited me, Dave, and you and Diane. And uh, when you had a house full of people, it was like that, and the anointing and the prophetic and everything, it had, a, it had God's favor on it. So I said, God's up to something. And so here's what I'm waiting for, and that is the next thing that he has for me that his favor's on. Because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, because We've went through this season, and now God's changing it. He's not shutting anything down. We're transitioning. God never shuts a Christian down. A true follower of a God anointed somebody, anointed somebody that loves the Lord, somebody that's doing what God's called them to do. He never shuts you down. He only promotes you or transitions you or takes you into the next thing he has for the sake of the body of Christ. So this is what I want to say. I bless this church. Yeah. And I thank the pastor of this church, and Dave and Diane, and Mike and Dina, the Burwells. I thank you for the opportunity, Lord, of ministering into all the different lives. I bless this church and the work of this church and the hands of the people. And I thank you for the time. And I thank you, God, that... <laughs> Only you, and David and Diane, and I know that, that we know beyond a shadow of that only you could make something so beautiful and trans trans do a transition where there is agreement and unity and love. Because Mike can't do praise and worship anymore. He's got 
so much on his plate for it that as long as he's done it, it's been a miracle. And I knew that. It's so timed perfectly. And we're not up against anything. God's transitioning. So be praying for this work. Be praying for it. So I, I do covet your prayers for proper uh, guidance and direction by the Lord. What I've been waiting for happened tonight. An answer from God. Should we continue? Or are you saying that you're done now you're, and we're going to do something else? And God answered that. So I'm rejoicing. But my heart, why wouldn't I be a little bit grieved? I, I wouldn't be human to say I'm not touched with a little bit of grief and going to miss it. Do you understand that? Even though it dwindled down and everything and it's time, but it still is precious and it's still, your, it's still one of your babies. And to let your baby grow up and to let it go, wow. So I'm having, I think, a proper response. Tears and joy. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Because I can stand here, and I know Dave can stand here, and I know... Diane can, and Berlin, and Armin, and Mike and Dina. And we could stand up here, and we could honestly say we did everything he told us to do. We have no regret. You just happen to be the, the congregation, the small congregation, that I got to speak that to. You know, get it off my chest. Do, and we went through a long winter, did we not? And we're faithful, 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 no matter if it was two or 20 or 30 or what, we were faithful. And God will honor that. So, don't be disappointed if you're in a transition and something's changed. Know that God has you there. And know that he will take you to the next thing he has for you. And you can count on it. Because that's who he is. And I decree and declare every person hearing this message that God wants to say to you that the transition time, though it may be painful and it may be long and it may be trying, the Lord says you are going to come out like pure gold because but when you're put into the fire to be tested, and you're put in by me, says the Lord, you always come out pure and holy and undefiled. You're transitioned to transition to transition. The Lord says, because I'm about multiplication. Now the Lord just spoke this to me. This is apostolic. It's an apostolic anointing that the church is in. He's duplicating himself and duplicating and duplicating and duplicating. And he's doing a work here and then he's taking it over here and he's doing a work and over here and he's doing a work and over here and he's doing a work. He can do what he wants to. He's God. You think I like it? But let me tell you what I, I do like. Being safe in his hands. More than trying to do my own thing and falling flat on my face in disappointment and grief and anguish. So Lord, here we are. We give you our ministry calls. And we give you everything that we are. And we place it in your hands again. Here I am again. On, on my knees again. Here I am on my knees again. And you're there. And we love you for it, Lord. Father, help every person that is waiting 
and bring the joy. The joyous part of waiting on you, which is victory, knowing what we already have the victory, you're going towards the victory. Thank you for being a blessing to us, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Father.